Hey guys, welcome to the wettest test you've already seen. Uh, this is the wettest test I've seen personally. Uh, it's been a really rainy day. We're in Hendon and the learner's been asked to do a reverse bay park to begin with. As you can see, visibility is quite poor because the rains are on the screen. But we'll just uh, have to do our best to see um, how the learner does. So from what I remember about this test, it took quite a while to complete this uh, bay park. Let's just see how long she takes. And what you don't want to do, you don't want to rush the bay park or any of the manoeuvres, but you do want to do it in a way that's not going to take too long or in a way that's not going to make the examiner think that you don't know how to do it. So it's just making small adjustments there back and forth. And at this point it can be quite stressful especially if it's right at the beginning as well i've seen people actually give up right at the beginning you don't want to do that you just try your best uh, until the examiner has said okay look, let's not do it anymore but if they haven't said anything just carry on and um, you might be able to do it like our learner's doing right now so because of the visibility is going to be quite poor you want to be looking around loads and, and here. You want to look around loads anyway in general, but when uh, it's raining like this or visibility is really poor, you want to look around even more because for some reason pedestrians don't really pay as much attention when it's raining like this. So make sure you look around for anyone close to you. And it'll probably be quite difficult so to see the lines here. One, because the mirrors might be a bit uh, watery and two, the lines that themselves might be covered in a bit of water so it's going to make things that much harder. So our learner has gone forward there to make an adjustment. So she would have got a fault for this. It wasn't actually a serious fault, it was a minor fault for the Bay Park. The serious faults are coming up in a bit and I'll talk you through those as well. One of them might surprise you actually. So it's coming up to three minutes now. And uh, still bringing it in slowly. So I think sometimes the examiners are patient, especially if they can see it's not like a normal situation where maybe the rain's a bit much, so they will give the learner a bit more time. It just depends on the on the examiner really. There you go, you've got uh, another vehicle going past. So those maintenance vehicles are coming in and out of that car park a lot, so just be mindful of them as well. And you can see we're right by the so examiner's come out to check. <clears throat> see if we're, yeah, she's in the bay properly. Sometimes they'll do that. If they can't see properly from inside the car, they'll come out to check. Just to confirm whether you're inside or not. After you do the manoeuvre, it's just about driving out towards the right and getting the, the driving started. So moving off smoothly, it's really important that you do your clutch control properly here. Going uphill like that, it's, it's quite a steep hill and when the floor is really wet, it's easy to slip the, the wheels because uh, there won't be much grip there. Turning right and positioned herself very nicely there. Checking both sides. And coming out. And then turning next right as well. Thank you. 
taking it nice and slow because this has has signs for 10 miles an hour but on a rainy day like this you might even want to go even a bit slower just so you can deal with it properly <laughs> so just because it's raining doesn't mean go slow everywhere I had a learner who actually watched a video the night before their test and it told them that when it's raining you need to go slower but I think he took that too literally and he was going slow everywhere even on the contrary that was 60 miles an hour he was doing like 30 miles an hour and when he could have been going much faster and you got a serious fault for going too slow so you need to judge it what's the speed limit how safe is it to go faster you know that kind of thing um, don't just go on a rule that you've heard and not really apply any sort of common sense to it you have to look at what's happening and drive accordingly you can see the floor there's covered in water most of it anyway and turning left at the end of the road pretty straightforward I'm guessing no one was there <laughs> people in the road I think we've got our workmen there as well so here we're gonna be going right the uh, right fourth exit on the roundabout coming back to where that van is so we're gonna go all the way around to the fourth exit and you can see on the floor there that side is flooded so we need the right side anyway so you can see the splashing water coming up from the side there because that's how much water there is there so here our learner's gone you can see there's a huge puddle in the middle of the roundabout as well this is gonna be it's going to cause some issue here as you'll see in a second so she's gone forward but she's gone too far left and then there's a car on the left lane there as well and this is where she actually got the first series so the examiner didn't actually mark it down as a series because it wasn't too too bad but um when she made another mistake further down the road that's when he gave her that series kind of near the end actually he decided to give her that one as a series as well they will do that they won't, they're not going to give you a series sometimes straight away if it's kind of like a, you know borderline um but if you make other mistakes then it's going to make it easier for them to give you a series for that one as well and turning left so with that puddle she could have the one in the roundabout she could have just gone through it slowly or if she is going to go to the left like that at least uh, don't go too much left if there's a car there already because remember that bit there had two lanes and there was a car using the other lane so that's when you have to be a bit more careful and with puddles you don't want to drive through them really fast so let's say you're in a country road and you see a huge puddle if you drive through it at like 40 miles an hour 50 miles an hour that could cause you problems could actually lose control of the car like that so in those sort of situations you might want to just slow down uh, maybe even go around it if it's safe check your mirror and go around it if there's no other like you know oncoming vehicles uh, what you don't want to do is drive through it at high speeds because you could lose control of the car. So this is quite early in the daytime and you can see it's very dark already. It looks like it's almost night time but it's not. It's just dark because of how um, heavy the clouds were. You're just going to make visibility a bit more difficult as well. And in this situation you want to leave your lights on. Just so, you, just so other drivers can see you so you, they're not really going to do anything for you in terms of you know making you see the road better but it's going to make other drivers see you better and now we're approaching a roundabout now some learners don't see as they get to it remember you want to be looking out for that blue um, mini roundabout sign letting you know that there's a roundabout because even though there might not be any traffic coming from the right side you do still want to look to the right and you still want to show the examiner that you've noticed that it's a roundabout by looking to the right hand side so for some reason a lot of learners miss this roundabout just go straight through without realizing without looking to the right side over there but that will cause you problems um you have to look to that side 
just to acknowledge that it is a roundabout and also to make sure that it's safe to proceed. I think she's been asked to pull over on the left in a safe place. It's done that very nicely. And here I think the Satnav is getting put on now for the independent driving. So all our learners got to do now is start following the signs or start following the instructions from the sat-nav. So just remember with the sat-nav driving you can ask them if you're not sure where the sat-nav is telling you to go. The examiner will help you if you need help. So here it looks like you're turning right at the roundabout. It's nice and clear, so our learner is gone, well done. You can see the wipers working very hard to keep the rain away there. So the screen where the driver is looking is actually clearer than what you can see. It's just because the camera is is mounted a bit higher up. So you're seeing the bit that the wipers can't reach. But where our learner is looking through, it is a bit clearer than what you can see right now. And then turning left at the end. Yep, nice position. It was clear, so she's gone. <laughs> now this section is quite narrow. You have to be careful as you go through it, especially if there are larger vehicles coming through like buses and lorries. There won't be enough space for both of you to squeeze through there. And it makes it harder to judge as well when it's raining, especially if people are going fast. So you want to take a bit more time there in those meeting situations and make sure you're doing it safely. As you can see, most people have got their headlights on as well, which is good so you can see them easier. But there may be others that haven't got their lights on, so watch out for them as well, uh, especially cyclists or people wearing dark clothes because it is quite dark now so you might not be able to see them as well going straight at these lights so they're changing and learn has done well to respond to them nicely I think the rain's getting heavier so she's put the wipers a bit higher up. There seems to be always something happening with police around this on this junction here. Okay. So I don't know what they were doing there but uh, that happened before on another test in the same exact junction. They went to the middle, stopped for a bit and then carried on. This section is a bit hilly and a bit narrow as well. You just take your time as you're driving through there. Look out for the lights when they're changing, like it's like now it's uh, flashing orange, you want to be ready to move. Even if you're like the second car, 
but especially if you're the first car because sometimes people get distracted there and they miss when the light's changing now going up this really this bit here is really steep i don't know if you can tell in the from the camera but it's very very steep here and sometimes you have to stop here for pedestrians if the light changes and then moving off again can be quite tricky if you're not like used to doing hill starts so our learner's got a hill start right now let's see how she does it's pretty good no roll back and um, because it's very steep there but that was well done See, there's a lot going on here so we're trying to turn left at the lights but you've got cars parked up uh, on the left there you have got cars reversing as well so if there's lots going on you want to take a bit more time with it and you notice here the lane splits into two and you see we've got a green light for turning left but a red light for uh, going right so you only be paying attention to your light as you go through then as you turn here as well sometimes that light is green but then turns to red as you approach it so if that, if it does that make sure you stop because that light does apply to you and you can tell if it applies to you or not depending on whether there's a white line next to the light so if there's a stop line next to the light as you approach it then it does apply to you but if there's no lines there and it's just you know just the light and then tarmac you can go through it because that light won't be for you be for the people that are behind you that are on the main road basically then once it goes green again you want to start moving and the lanes will start kind of merging together here so you want to check your mirror especially the right one make sure that uh, you know you're not cutting anybody up or no one's cutting you up as you go into that same space and then at these traffic lights um, turning right so this is where I learned I got the second serious fault and you see why in a sec I'll talk you through it So as you can see the light is still green and people are turning now so it's good so just gone through to the middle now she should carry on now because you see it's changing to red but it should carry on and you shouldn't stop there anymore because you can have cars coming from the other side now so she should have carried on but she hesitated and stopped in the middle when she should have actually carried on driving so that's when she got another serious fault for traffic lights there so a lot of learners are confused at the junction sometimes they don't even wait for people that are coming head on they just go and get a serious for that or they will see a green arrow and still wait and get serious for that as well so if you're around the area it's worth going to that junction and giving it a good practice just so you can get used to it and then here going through a width restriction some learners have tried to go through that bus lane bit but you need to go through here for the cars and gear one nice and slow you see the bus is going through there so you only be checking your right mirror right now in case another bus is doing that as they're or even another vehicle sometimes uh, like i said drivers will go in there without realizing so as you go through the restriction and you join in the road again just check that right mirror to make sure there's no one coming from behind you and trying to overtake you so at this stage the examiner is just uh probably making the way back to the test center because she's got that serious fault for the traffic light so now the test is pretty much effectively over it's just a matter of going back to the test center now but they won't tell you this and if you feel like you've done a mistake or you've done a serious mistake don't give up carry on because sometimes you, you might think you've done a serious mistake when you haven't or if you feel like they're taking you back to the test center now which means you failed that's also not correct because sometimes it might just be part of the route so you're going back towards the test center just stay relaxed because you still might be able to pass you might just mean that they're going back uh, a certain route towards the test center but you still have a chance to pass the test so basically my point is don't give up until they tell you to turn the engine off Go 
going straight through at their temporary lights. So this is their 20 mile an hour road now. With speed bumps as well, you just take your time through here, keep an eye on your speed. Especially if you come in the other way where those cars are going down, because sometimes they get you to come that way as well. And it can be very easy to speed because it's kind of going downhill. So just be mindful of what the speed limit is on that road. And then here the road bends really sharply towards the right. Make sure you're paying attention because it can get a bit confusing. And people coming out from where that car just came from sometimes get confused there as well. That is also somewhere they could take you. Coming out of there can be a bit confusing because it's a left turn, but you're not really turning left because you're just joining the road without really turning your steering wheel. So um, some people get confused there not realizing that it's the end of the road. So just be mindful there. So we've got a bus in front of us. And the rain's getting heavier. Me personally, I don't really mind driving in the rain. But when it gets too heavy, you might wanna, if it gets really, really heavy, you might wanna stop somewhere. There are situations where it gets so heavy that the screen gets flooded. So here the bus is indicating left or learners should have positioned themselves towards the right a bit so they can go around, but they got really close to the bus and then the car behind is actually gonna go around. So I've seen people actually fail for this before, uh, but I learned didn't get a serious fault for this maybe because of the conditions, but in a normal situation, you don't want to get that close to the bus. You want to position yourself a bit to the right and then uh, go around them when it's safe. You don't want to be stopping every single bus stop with the bus. That's going to be an issue. So it's really important that you know the controls of the car that you're taking on your test as well, because um, if it's getting steamy or if the rain gets heavy, you need to do the wipers properly. You need to know how to do it without you know, help from the examiner because they won't help you with those things. If they have to help you, that could actually be a serious fault. So you need to know how to dimmiss the windscreen, how to turn the wipers on, all that kind of stuff. So I can see now it's getting quite steamy in the car there. It looks like it's getting a bit foggy. And you don't want it to get worse and worse because you, then you can't see anything out of the windscreen. And here, sometimes the examiner will say to you, watch out for the road markings ahead. Uh, they're just trying to give you a heads up about the roundabout. Uh, we talked about this roundabout earlier, but even here, you want to go around it a bit. So you see learners gone a bit to the right, should have gone a bit more left to go around it. I've seen learners fail there because they've gone too far to the right to go over. And I've, I've also heard examiners say, you don't need to go all the way around, you can just kind of cut across, but you do need to try go a bit left so that you're not driving on the wrong side basically as you go over that roundabout and watching out for people's indicators when as well when it's raining can be quite tricky you want to look extra hard to make sure that they're not signaling to go like where that bus was signaling to go that way they've got priority so you need to make sure that you're seeing that especially there's some cars that they've um, quite badly designed indicators you won't see them properly until you get really close or there is a certain angle so in those sort of situations you have to be extra vigilant coming back in now to turn towards the test center uh, learners positioned herself nicely to turn right sees quite a lot of traffic there but uh, this car has stopped giving a little flash and she's gone. Remember, you don't have to go if somebody's flashed you unless you're really sure that they that is for you. So if it's for you and you know for certain you've made communication with the other driver, then yeah, go. But if you're not sure, just wait until you know for certain that that flash was for you because sometimes that driver could be flashing somebody else. But if you know it's for you and you can see that it's safe, then yes, you can do it.
We've got a Lerna car parked on the left with the hazard lights on. Not sure if there's any cars coming from the other side why, as to why our Lerna has stopped behind that car. And now there's a car coming. So I was saying before in, the, in another video, this area can be a bit tricky, especially with cars parked uh, on the side like that. It does make things a bit more challenging, so just be ready for that in case that happens. So if you are going to do a test there, it's not really the best place to stop and chat because it's going to cause a lot of issues for other drivers. So it's probably best to find somewhere else to park up. Coming back into the test center, he's got to take a time. It's quite a tight squeeze, especially if there's somebody coming through as well. Usually there's not enough space for two cars to turn in and out at the same time there, so I just have to wait it's a bit clearer but then once you stop this is where the examiner will explain to you uh, what happened in the test and here they're explaining about um, the serious faults so hopefully you guys enjoyed that i'll see you in the next one and thanks for watching bye